that dog farts. Oh my god. <laughs> like she's we actually had a customer email us one time. She was like, uh, or the guy was like, hey, that was a great meeting. Next time, maybe don't feed the dog directly before my meeting. <laughs> I was like, oh no. Welcome to the 2448. We are so glad to have you. Thanks for having us. Yeah, so I'm Sam, the host of the show, and... I'm Justin Cagle, uh, owner at Fully Involved Leatherworks. Fully Involved Leatherworks. That's pretty sick. I'm excited to have you here and hear about your story. Yeah. So just give me, like, kick it off with what is... What do you want to get out of the show today? What is Fully Involved Leatherworks? Kind of give me, like, the, the high level of what you guys do. Um, so in a nutshell, we make radio straps, shields, chin straps, um... Anything really leather with fire service, uh, we make it. Um, we, you know, I was a third generation fireman. Never once thought I would be where I am today. I should be riding a fire truck. <laughs> um, that was my long range plan, and uh, you know, we just started off this as a hobby, and uh, kind of fell in my lap. Um, yeah, I'm fortunate to be where I am today because I'm, like I said, I should not be here. Yeah. So, what uh, do you guys actually make? Um, so, you know, we, we basically take raw leather and make all the way, um, so radio straps, um, the fire helmet shields, uh, oh, yeah. chin straps. We do a lot of glove straps, flashlight holders, um, geez, the list goes on and on. Suspenders, um, pretty you know, much any of the leather pretty stuff. Pretty much any of the leather stuff is, is, is us. Um, That's awesome. You know, our top selling products are the shields and the custom radio straps. That's cool. And, and so, and you were a fireman for, before that? You yep. Just... So, um. My grandpa was a volunteer fireman, started a, a, you know, a fire department back in the late 30s, early 40s. I was a founding member there. My dad was a volunteer fireman. From the time I was eight years old, I knew I wanted to be a fireman. Um, that's so that's cool. kind of what I was around it. I, you know, it's just, it was my life. Did you um, think you were going to be like a business fire person or were you just, no, a, no, I'm no, just no. fireman? Like, that's no, all I was going to be the, the just, you know, guy that rode the back <laughs> of the truck, did my job, went home yeah. 30 years later. Get a retirement check and, you know, go harass people at Walmart or something. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. How did it start? I mean, when, did, did, were you volunteering when you were a kid or whatever? Or yeah, you, so yeah. I started out as a um, junior fireman, like, at 13, 14 years old, and um, kind of went up through that. When I was about 16, I got really serious about, you know, this is what I want to do. Had a lot of great mentors through the fire service that uh, had known me growing up as a kid, and I still talk to those guys today, but they that's had cool. – uh, you know, been really good about getting me prepared. Uh, at that time, the fire service was a lot harder to get into professionally than it is now. Yeah. Um, so you had to be on top of your game. You had to have <laughs> somewhat of a decent reputation, which I don't know what hurt me. But, awesome. um, you know, so at 16, I was like, you know what, I'm going to get my firefighter one. My so AMT. you knew when you were yeah. a kid, like a kid. Yeah. I mean, 16 yeah. is still a kid. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so I went and got that as soon as I was old enough to take all the classes. Back then, they were a little more lenient on – Sending you in a burn of structures and stuff like that. But, <laughs> yeah. um, so, you know, I got certified. Um, graduated high school, knew that's what I wanted to do. Were well, you certified and, as you graduated high school? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Um, so you were really. Yeah, so I got out and then, you know, four or five months later, got hired. That's um, cool. With my first full-time job. And uh, it was kind of cool. I got several different job offers. And we can get this. that's a whole other story. But, <laughs> um, you know, it was really hard to get in. I got several job offers at a time. Kind of chose my local uh, town I grew up uh, near. That's and, cool. And uh, knew a lot of those guys. And what was it like, kind regret. of first career? Did you ever work anywhere else, or do you always like? I did some. You know, if you're in the volunteer fire service, you know, there's <laughs> always a guy that owns a landscaping company. And hey, that's why like, this show yeah. exists because we literally yeah. like everyone's got a side gig, yeah. right? So, um, you know, I helped some guys out do landscaping, uh, things like that. I worked at a restaurant through high school a little bit, but never really. I've never been in corporate America or uh, anything. So a lot of this is. Uh, Strange to me, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's. Uh, you know, funny. I know how to ride a fire truck, and that was kind of it. So, having to evolve and understand and, and adapt, and kind of mix the fire service with corporate America, and that's not easy. Oh yeah. To do you do. like? You know, I guess it's probably a little bit fast forwarding, but I mean, do you find that the fire service background, like the drive that puts you there, is valuable in your business today? Oh, for sure, for sure. Um, a lot of the the tactics. Um, you know, I always tell people when they apply for a job or someone with them, like, this is not corporate America. It's a little bit different. <laughs> um, I've got yeah. part-time firemen that work here, and that's, that's where we came from. Our, yeah. That's our customer base. And we're not going to be uh, maybe at all times politically correct or, 
um, you know, the HR uh, HR department's kind of non-existent. Hey, but, we'll do uh, it. We'll do it yeah. by law. We'll be 100 yeah. percent above board. Yeah. But we're, we're legal and everything. We're of the but fire you know, we're, right? you're, gonna, you're gonna get harassed every once in a uh, while. Yeah, <laughs> uh, not you know harassed, but we're gonna have firehouse have pranks and have a good time. So. That's awesome. Um, well, I'll come back to that. I want to hear more <laughs> about the current business um, yeah. and kind of like how that all works. I want to understand. As, as you were forming your identity as a fireman and kind of like getting out of school and getting into that role and first job, what was your forward look on, you know, outlook on your career and like what were you planning on and what were the first couple of days like? Um, oh, uh, so first couple of days were <clears throat> um, the weirdest days of my life. Um, so, you know, you go through recruit school, you graduate, you're on top of the world, you're, you're everything. Um, get a sign with crew. Um, the first or second shift, I can't remember exactly – um, <clears throat> hear my address come out on the radio. <laughs> oh, that's right? not good. <laughs> For an unconscious patient. Long story short, my mom had breast cancer. Oh, no. Uh, so I thought maybe something had happened to her. She passed out, whatever. Um, long story short, it was my dad. He had a massive heart attack and, and coded, and no they way. never got him back. On your first uh, shift? Yep. Holy yep. shit. So uh, that was, yeah, it was. Um, that's crazy. It kind Did of you run that me to call? Grow, uh, no, it was uh, a, another <sighs> engine in the city, but, um, you know, you kind of heard it and then, yeah, you, you, you know, know and on. you know what's going on, but you're always like, man, we had that one set, you know, um, yeah. and back then CPR wasn't really as effective yeah. as I think it is now. Um, so there was always that hope and, and that thing, but you know, he didn't make it. Oh, no, um, I'm so, sorry so that, that. that kind of forced me to grow up, I guess, a little bit faster than, than a lot of guys. Yeah, I bet. Um, yeah. Cause I was dealing with my mom with, breast cancer she was scheduled to have a mastectomy the following week no way yeah, so um, holy cow my, my brother you know <laughs> brother's a good dude he, he wasn't you know he's trying to do his thing he just graduated college so oh yeah uh, how old just were you a lot of, i was 18 almost 19 years so old. like still a kid yeah still a kid that shouldn't have yeah. holy cow so uh it, it was good and and going back to when i said i got several job offers and, and i actually got a job offer the day after my dad died or the following week yeah, uh, for a really large municipality that was kind of a dream shot. Um, but going back to that, you know, like I said, it was my hometown. A lot of guys knew my dad's stuff. Dude, I was a new guy on the truck. I had no time. I had, yeah. I was, I was the scum of the, <laughs> yeah, you know, like, like you're washing uh, floors and you're doing it a second time. Then you're washing yeah, the truck. Right. Yeah. So I, I was the scum of the earth. Um, I took all that time off took care of my mom. All those guys donated time for me. Did they we really? got whatever, you know, anything we needed. Um, just that family. I'm Even the new guy still Even had. Even the new guy, yeah. So, um, That's really cool. That really is what helped keep me there, I guess. It was like, you know what? These guys are willing to do all this for me. Yeah. This is something I want to be a part of. That is really cool. Um, That's a terrible story mm-hmm. when you think about it in the in the sense of like what occurred. But yeah. it's such an inspiring story to hear like, yeah, that, the fire service yep. coming around That's, you is. The fire service culture. Um, how, did they, how did they help? I mean, obviously, you knew what was going on. You see the cabinets, yeah, whatever. Yeah. So how did they, what happened during the day? Um, did the guys like, did they let you off shift? Oh yeah. They, so yeah. my battalion chief came, and picked me up, um, immediately took me to the hospital. You know, I didn't go to work that day. I don't yeah. think I went to work for two or three weeks till my mom got, um, uh, done. It was just outpouring of support and oh, good yeah. people that, that stepped up and, and did good things in bad times. Yeah. Um, I tell people the fire industry <laughs> is like, you know, we make lights and they could go on dumpsters, yeah. so they could go on fire trucks, they go yeah. on mining shovels. But the fire industry, like, the people are so different, and we treat yeah. them differently, and they treat us differently. And there's, like, I don't – it's not integrity. It's something different. It's, yeah. like, there's yeah. just something different about the public servants that are doing good work. Yeah, and I think you said it. Uh, I was watching – you know, i got to do a little research on you guys before I come on the podcast. <laughs> I was watching one of your uh, promo for the podcast, and I think you said it best. You know, even the worst people in the fire service are some of the best people in the community. That's exactly right, yeah. Um, so, you know, that statement just – it hit home, but, yeah. you know, to that situation. Um, that's wild. So how did your um, your career – I mean, that's a transformative moment to have your oh, dad yeah. die on your first shift <laughs> and then taking care of your mom at home. How did you then – you know, then you're picking up a whole new job, a whole new career, and that yep. shift works, so it's got to yep. be different than – Yeah, for what, sure. Was, were you still living at home or were you – Yeah, I was still uh, living at home, you know, uh, of course, every, you know, firemen, they want to get their brand-new <laughs> truck first before they uh, – Yeah, you know, priorities, right? Out, like, you know, why do you move out of – you know? Yeah, exactly. Uh, gonna have you know all the all the cool stuff first, and then we think about houses. But, um, y- you know, back to that it was just it was a huge part of my life that just changed. I yeah. mean, there's no other way. You know, your your dad's not there anymore. He was, um, I, I guess looking back at it, I was kind of one of those um, 
I guess I'm going to use the term know it all. Like me and my dad had a good relationship. Yeah. But it was like I was more involved in the fire service than he was. And I didn't really want to. And he listen. was a fireman too. And he was a fireman. So yeah. I didn't really want, like, you know, it was my dad. <laughs> if you would have I said, can't imagine if my dad yeah, was a fireman. Yeah. I can't imagine it, it would be. If you would have said the same thing he said, I would have listened to you before I listened to him. Just because, yeah, you, yeah. you know, that that's kind of, um, I guess I was a bonehead teenage boy uh, like right. everybody else. Yeah. Um, Did anybody in the fire service. <laughs> Not you can't step in and fill that role, but yeah. did anybody kind of fill that role? Like as you were then, now you're new in the in the industry. There's got to be like an old salty dog, or is there someone oh, yeah. around? So that- you know, back to the same guys that helped get me prepared for um, jobs. I, I had a neighbor down the street. He was a training chief. Uh, he was a huge part of my life. Um, yeah. I'm not gonna say he's my dad, of course, but yeah, um, he was always there to you know work landscaping with him. Yeah, we <laughs> dude, we burnt down so many houses driving by them <laughs> to the next yard. Um, you know, doing size ups and talking about fire attacks and uh, yeah. uh, priorities <laughs> and all the 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 things that that uh, us eight up guys do. You know, yeah, oh yeah, and uh, so it was good to have. You know, he was always good there for guidance. Um, a lot of guys at work. Um, Captain and stuff. Um, my last captain I worked for, you know, he he actually took me on my first fire, and uh, was a great dude. Been around me my entire life. That's um, cool. Just there's always good mentors. Yeah. Uh, for that, and I've tried to try to extend that back out through my life. That yeah, you know, not everybody has somebody. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <clears throat> what did any of that kind of lead you to the business table, or how did you make the transition from like being a firefighter, having this transformative event, and then like all of a sudden? <clears throat> You know, like business is starting to occur. How did yeah? What happened? So uh, the business spark, I guess you would say. Um, so fast forwarding, you know, I did the typical typical fireman plan. You know, you get on a fire department, <laughs> you do some landscaping, and then you yep. get tired of that and realize <laughs> that it doesn't pay really well in the winter. Oh, so you yeah, start picking up these part time jobs at volunteer fire departments. Yeah, so oh, I did yeah. that. <laughs> Good times. Um, don't regret it a bit. A lot yeah. of you know, but at the end of the day. You get burnout out riding yeah, fire yeah. truck to fire truck to fire truck to fire truck. And it's just one thing after the other. Um, so we were actually doing a pre-instant survey, walked in this new business, and they sold fire equipment. Mm, interesting. And it was this, I mean, dude, it was the size of this room. And I'm like, yeah, I'll sell fire equipment. <laughs> yeah. um, so anyway, I got to talking, and they're like, hey, you know anybody looking for a part-time job? I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm in something different. You yeah, know, oh, yeah. Same, Still love the industry. Same field, same, same clowns, different circus, you know? Yeah, exactly. And um, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so we started, um, started working with them. Um, and that kind of, my first job there was a lot of e-commerce stuff, because they were e-commerce based. Oh, yeah. They did a lot of drop shipping. Oh, okay. uh, didn't really warehouse anything. So uh, did a lot of drop shipping, um, did a lot of good stuff. It was a retired fireman, and you know you always got to have the money guy in there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, so at the end of the day, um, you know, learned a lot about e-commerce and Google marketing. Were you still and, running on a fire truck? And yeah, you just yeah, I was still, in it? yeah, I was just part time in it. Um, kind of phased out of the part time fire service. Uh, so I was riding a full full time fire truck, and then working for these guys. Um, as the business evolved, it grew really quickly, wound up warehousing a lot of stuff and it got to the point where I was doing the shipping and receiving and and managing a lot of that. Still part-time in it. Yeah. Yeah, Still part-time in it. So we kept growing, kept growing and, and, you know, you're just hiring people and they're not really, you know, essentially they were kind of working for me, but they weren't officially working for for me, but I really had no say in it. So long story short, it just got to the point where I was just completely fed up. Yeah. I was like, this is fun but the people i'm working with are not the people i want to be working with because yeah. they're lazy yeah oh, and they have no idea what they're doing yeah um if you can pick the team you get to work with you get to pick a team of guys at work yeah. that are like a players get yeah. the job done yeah. and then it's like oh shoot well yeah, yeah i can so, do anything why would i do that it just got to the point i finally got fed up and i said look the best thing i need to do i'm gonna take a month off yeah my part-time and i'm gonna figure out what i'm gonna do interesting so i sat at home for like two or three days I'm like, all right, yeah, everything's done. The honey-do list is checked off. <laughs> like, kids have picked up from school. They've got their nice packed, you know, everything that that you could do. And I'm like, I gotta, I want to do something. So I was like, I need a new shield. I just got, I think I just got promoted. And I was like, I want to make a new <laughs> I shield. I picture the guys in yeah. my house. They're like, oh, I'll paint my helmet today. Yeah. Oh, I'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I was like, you know what? I'll learn to make one. So I went down to Tandy in Charlotte, which is. 
the Walmart of leather. There's nothing good in there. Okay. I, re- I, re- uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know anything uh, about the leather yeah. world. So. so, you know, I took a hundred bucks and I bought some tools and uh, a little bit of leather and scraps and I played around with it. And, and you were just going to make a shield. Yeah. I was just going to make a shield for myself. And, um, there was a local company that, that, uh, I'm actually good friends with the owner now, um, that made shields. And I was trying to kind of copy this and do that. And, um, use his template, I guess you would say, and kind of make my own. And I was like, I really don't like it. So I'm, I created my own template. Yeah. And um, I think it, I think I made like 15 of these things before it actually looked like maybe <laughs> you might want to kind of not wear it on your helmet. What's it start out as? Is it uh, like a big piece of leather? You buy yes, a little yeah. square so it's, I mean, it's cow skin, you know. So oh, okay. um, the, it starts out on the side. So basically if you were to cut the cow in half by the backbone, yeah. you know, it's kind of like a drape. Oh, yeah. And um, so you can buy smaller pieces, and that's what, it, obviously, I couldn't afford the whole thing. You <laughs> Are know, they, like, about... floppy? I think about my fire helmet is it's hard. But yeah, like, is so it... your fire helmet's hard because of resin. Oh. Yeah, they cut it with resin. I have no um, idea, yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, it's just like shoe leather. I guess you say a shoe sole. You yeah, know, you, okay. Depending yeah. on how thick you get. I mean, your couch is leather, too, but it's not not that stuff. thick. So, um, you know, we, I, I made a lot of them. And yeah. And eventually I made one, and it was okay, and I put it on my helmet. And uh, that's the f- that's where the the com you're talking about the good people with the comedy you know I take this thing in put it on my helmet and I'm like proud of, dude this thing is, <laughs> I worked hard on this I got like 3,700 man hours how quick did they cut this you down fifty dollar shield door. and they're like nice crayon bro and I'm like come on man like I got a lot of work yeah I busted my ass on this and we're talking so about? Um, going back to my last captain he's like hey man I want you to make me a shield and I'm like. Really? Like, you're kind of... Everybody else is hanging shit on me. Yeah, Do you want me yeah. to make you one? So, I'm like, okay. So, I said, let me get a little bit better. So, I made another one. I wound up making myself, like, three. And um, he's like, hey, man, I, I like your work. You know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, dude, I don't, I don't even know what to charge this guy. Like, he should be... I should be paying him. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, we're, we're okay. It's starting to take shape, but we're not perfect. Yeah. I got a lot of learning to do. Yeah. Um, so, he's like, no, nah, I want to... So, I uh, started making it. He's like... I want, I want for all my crew, you know. He's really? Like, yeah. So there was this company out of uh, Kansas City, and they went really viral in the shield industry for a couple of years, and eventually he's a Kansas City fireman, and dude, his work is phenomenal. Oh, and cool. He's got his own shape, and it's all, it's, it's just, you drool on it, you know. That's cool. So he's like, I want you to kind of replicate this. So I did it, and it looked okay all right uh it wasn't his work but um you know he was like two years out he's charging like 175 dollars a piece for these shields which is everybody else with 60 90 bucks oh really yeah. wow um and he was like two years out yeah so <laughs> i made this thing and he's like i was like dude i really like you're my friend i don't want to cause riffles here over 20 bucks or what you know i don't know what to charge you. he's like well here's what i would have paid so, you know, he paid me for his whole crew what that guy would have charged him. No way. Yeah. Holy cow. Um, that's so slick. that kind of moved the business forward a little bit. We got a little bit of working capital now. You know, yeah, we got like 300 cool. bucks in the bank. Um, <laughs> so from awesome. there, it kind of went to a hobby. Um, Were you thinking like, oh, I can make this a business? Or was it just like, oh, the guy with a shield? It could be a business, but just a way for me to side hustle and control yeah. my <laughs> control my own destiny. You know, yeah. let the kids play soccer or yeah, make yeah. an extra mortgage payment this month. Or Where were you doing it? Were you screwing around in my like house. off time? Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah, house, uh, my wife, yeah. I replaced the countertops in my house because uh, <laughs> I, I kind of messed them up. Um, I got forbidden from soldering in my house and eventually yeah. moved in here. Yeah, <laughs> she yeah. was like, no, you yeah. can't. no more, no soldering so, in the kitchen. So then I moved to the garage, but you know, no we, were in a, in the we were in a 1,300-square-foot house with a single-car garage, and there's just not enough room with all the kids' junk and oh, yeah. all that stuff in the garage. So um, as we kind of move forward, you know, I wanted a radio strap. I didn't really like anything that was on the market because I got tired of seeing these guys pay big money for radio straps. Yeah. And all they were was painted leather. So in a year, half the paint was wore off of them and and, and stuff. So um, I started researching that. Went to a local local leather shop, old school, you know, shoe cobbler. You know, they make you a belt. Uh, Downtown kind of just an old old school 1920s leather shop. Oh, really? Yeah. And I'm like, hey, man, I want to make this. And uh, Are these places that, like, sell leathers, like Michael, Michael's Crafts of Leathers? Or is it, like, an actual No, like, it's artist, actually, like, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Place. They repair shoes and oh, okay, yeah. uh, make your belts or stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, downtown old school yeah, uh, yeah, kind yeah, of leather yeah. shop. And, um, 
you know, you walk in, it's got the spittoon by the door kind of place. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, I uh, so he's, you know, he gave me a few tips and uh, was kind of hesitant about it. And I was like, this guy's kind of weird. <laughs> So I did what he said, and then I took it back in there like two weeks later. To show him, like, hey, here's what I did. Like, here's what I did. I said, I'm still not perfect. You know, we got any tips? Were you just looking for advice? Like, hey, man, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, come on, dude. You're 90 years old. You've been around leather your whole life. (laughs) Let's just face it. Like, you're, you know, you got a foot in the grave and one on a banana peel. You're not going to be around forever. Somebody's got to take this over. Um, So, you know, he, uh, he said, well, if I wanted to do this, I'd just do the work myself. Get out of here. Really? Yeah, and I was like... Hmm. All right. Well, All right. Well, that was interesting. So then, you know, every fireman's life resort, we're going to YouTube it. Oh, yeah. Right? Of course. You can learn anything on YouTube. So, yeah. uh, anyway, long story short, we, we wasted tons of leather and tons of dye and everything and finally got this. You're, perf- you're trying to make a radio strip. Yeah. That was yeah. kind of the thing. Uh, but the big thing was I didn't want to paint it. I wanted to dye the text into the leather so it would never come out. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but the problem is you got, you know, it's, it's kind of like wood stain. Okay. Oh, yeah. If you stain this section black and you get outside – the box, you can't put brown around it. Yeah. Or, yeah, you know, yeah. vice versa. So, oh, so there's uh, got to be like a whole, is that what you were trying to yeah, learn? Yeah. That whole process. Yeah. The whole process and how to get everything consistent and, and all that. So, anyway, long story short, we wound up finally nailing it, knocking it out of the park. Um, and that's kind of what, I guess, got us in the industry of radio straps. Was it like, was it a business at that time or was it still just like, I'm going to try and make No, it this was, man, we were selling, I was teaching, um, you know, teaching on the side at night and stuff, trying to make that extra money <laughs> yeah. again. Uh, that's a whole nother saga. Yeah. And, um, you know, so you go to class and a couple got, Hey man, I need a radio strap. Can you hook me up? Oh and, yeah. You know, um, so taking orders after class or, or whatever. So we were just kind of a local, Yeah. I was a local guy that, you know, Somebody can come to. I think this and, whole podcast is talking to people that are like, that are, that's that's how our business yeah. started. It was like literally after the like after a call, you'd be like, hey, man, what, you know what? Yeah. BS at the fire station or like at a weekend school, yep. you'd be talking about stuff. Yep. And I think it's so interesting to hear people like your story where you run a business. But it's like it starts in the bays. The 2448 yep. is like what happens in the off time. But it's like even in the on time, you're talking with the guys, yep. you're screwing around at work, yep. like – all that is so valuable. And all these guys are beating you or telling you this looks good, and you're getting 75,000 opinions. And oh, who, yeah. Who's matters and who's doesn't and yeah. who's right and who's How wrong. did you weigh that up as, yeah. you're, as you're kind of uh, in the, you know, whatever? Um, who do you decide to listen to? Uh, my friends. You know, <laughs> um, if you were my buddy and you came up to me like, dude, that looks like hammered butt, then you know, I'm probably going to uh, take your yeah. advice. If you're one of those guys who's just the mouthy, loud, Butthead, I know you've all got them at your fire station. Yeah. <laughs> it is what it is. It's just lip service. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay, um, thanks, man. I can tell you, hundreds of businesses that have started in the fire firehouse now. Yeah. Whether they're still here or not, <laughs> yeah. that's another one. Um, maybe tell me a little bit about in the early days, if there was anything in your in your business or kind of like in your setting things up that made you guys more unique than what else you get online. Yeah, so um, looking at our competitors, and I spent a lot of time researching who was doing what and um, – it was you either had all this custom high end or higher cost things, or you had the typical Boston leather. And I'm not dogging them, but everybody and their brother can get one for forty bucks at their local <laughs> local uh, fire service fire service distributor. distributor. Yeah. Um, so nobody offered those options, and really nobody was competing with Boston leather at all. There was mm. nothing out there that you could just call up order and send it out um at that time that was before some of the like the homeland six and the nylon style stuff came out um so we had a customer call up one day and he's like hey i just want i want your quality of strap but i don't want anything on it and i need it quick i'm like hey let's work for me cool yeah so we made that and i'm like why don't we make like 10 of these and just keep them in stock just a blank it's just a tool it's not like all your name and all this stuff it's just piece of leather it does its job same quality so um, we did that and put it on online as an option, and they just like started selling. Oh, right. so like, like custom okay. handmade, but yeah, still. But it, there's no customization on it. You can get it. You know, we have it in stock. It ships. You get it in three days. That's awesome. Uh, How do you manage? Do you just build all the inventory and just have them hanging? So you got hundred of them on the shelf anytime. Yeah. So we just them. have pallets of these things now. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. They're in <laughs> they're in bins so cool. of forty six, and and we just kind of rotate them out, and uh, we're always building them and. We got a system that says, okay, 
you know, is starting to say, hey, stupid Christmas is coming up. You might want to. Yeah, ramp up your production. Yeah, ramp up your production. You know, we need more of this. It kind of pretty smart system. So it looks at historical trend data and, oh, and yeah. analyzes and adjusts inventory levels and things like that. So And so you're all, I mean, that's the whole thing, though, is that like you can, as a fireman, if I'm looking for one of these things, yep. I can reach out and say, yep, yep. I want to have this. Thing. I'm going to give it someone as a gift. Yep. I want the best of the best. I got to be able to afford it. I want to give it as a gift. Boom, I can go on yep. little ship. Yep. It's fun of that mid level yeah. customer. What, uh, how did you learn? Like, was, did, did you just land into it and like, okay, I'm going to go ask this old guy at the local shop or did, yeah. like, what was the process like of learning how to, cause I don't know anything about leathers. Yeah, I wouldn't me know neither. Where to start. No, yeah. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, it's just a lot of trial and error. You know, it's kind of like, uh, I tell people leather craft is a lot like woodworking. There's no college you can go to to learn how to build a cabinet. So it's or, almost art. At it, some, yeah, at it, some to some extent, it's an art, and it's just understanding the process and looking and analyzing things around the market and what do I like and what what is it missing? What can I add to it? You know, we did something that was um, – my biggest pet peeve was you would wear a radio strap and your mic would come up and the cord would just dangle, especially yeah. you got that guy that never takes care of stuff and he's always <laughs> on the shift before you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you got this mic and it's like dangling everywhere. So I, we took the second mic loop and put a snap on it so you could open up and contain that cord. Oh, so it's not Yeah, and I was everywhere. like, let's try this. And now you look at everybody's radio straps. They all they have, have it, it. Yeah. yeah. That was one of your um, things. Th- my first employee, you know, funny story, um, we had a scrap piece of leather and he's like, we well, you know you got that up here. What if it flops down here? And he like put two snaps on it. And he's like, here, you could sell this for like, Three bucks, and I'm like, that's dumb. But yeah, like, <laughs> how many do you sell? A gazillion. Dude, we sold a billion <laughs> yeah. of these. Things. Um, yeah, it, it's kind of funny. So like, we kind of started that, and then even companies like Boston Leather, who's the king of leather, I guess, you oh, know, yeah. the, the grandpa of leather, they're selling them now. <laughs> no so, way. Yeah. That's cool. So it's kind of funny to watch what you do. You know, everybody's watching everybody. It's like, the leather industry and the fire service is the coolest group. Of, I don't know. I'm getting off topic here, but is the coolest group of people. Like we talk to each other, we hang out or you the know, other we, fire leather. Guys. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Like, um, we're competition, but we're not because there's dude, somebody's buying a radio strap every day. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. And they're burning them up. They're yeah, losing it. Somebody's brown and shield. Somebody's running over it with a fire truck. Yep, exactly. So, you know, Somebody left it because they didn't have cool lights on their fire truck. <laughs> and uh, there you go. Yeah. It sounds so, different yeah. than the old guy at the leather shop in Charlotte. Yeah. yeah. Like, is yeah. the fire service brotherhood? Is that kind of where that comes yeah. from? Yeah. What's um, the difference? There, there's guys out there that I talk to that, that, you know, I mean, obviously we're not like, hey, man, I got this new coolest, latest, greatest tool. You need yeah, to go buy it. But we talk about, hey, man, I'm having problems with this supplier. Where are you using? Things like that. Oh, so, really? Yeah. That's it's, cool. It's, uh, it's, it's cool. You would yeah. think we would all be like, rah, 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 you know. That's what I would have yeah, figured, yeah. Get out of my turf. Get out of my turf. But, um, there, there's, dude, there's thousands of guys that started out, and they're still just like where I was. Yeah. In their shop, they make 10 radio straps or 10 things a month, and they pay for their kid to go to college, and that's cool, and I, I respect that. Did um, you end up, like, did you have the aspiration, or when did you have the aspiration to transition from running like making a radio strap and showing it to your buddies to yeah. like hey this is actually going to be my job was it yeah. something like that happened at the fire station that happened after hours how did that um, come out? i think it was um there was a bid for something that was like looking at back at an else no money in it but there was somebody who was <laughs> wanting something and it had to be with an official business so i was like okay let's see what it takes to become a business. So did you did know, that. or did you have to like, just start asking your buddies? No, I had to start asking my buddies <laughs> and, and going back to that, you know, you got guys who have started businesses all over the fire service, whether it's landscaping, plumber, whatever it is. Oh yeah. Um, so, you know, those guys were there to help me out and walk me through that. And Hey, you don't need to pay an accountant. This is just a form you fill out and send to the state and give them 50 bucks. So yeah, I'll save you $500 from paying an accountant <laughs> to write down a form, uh, that kind of thing. So, um, you yeah, know, we just kind of started the business and then you know, you have to start getting checks and things like that where yeah, you, you can't take it to your bank and put it in your per- personal account. Where, yeah, yeah, it used to be. So um, we did the business just to be kind of formality and, you know, hopefully get something back on our taxes too, you know? Yeah. Um, did you end up thinking mm-hmm. in the bays or at the fire station, you know, were there – everybody in the fire service is tied to a business somehow, yeah. right? Were there people that you particularly gravitated to that you were, like, bouncing ideas off of or anything like that? Um, yeah, I think it was – Going back to those same people that were mentors, yeah, through the fire service, um, you know, I was bouncing ideas off them. Um, the I had I was on a crew with a guy who had just started a fencing company, so we were going through a lot of the same hurdles. Um, and while the businesses are different, 
we still had the same business problems. Business. You know, business people pay huge money for like you know coaching groups. There's all yeah. these coaching groups around. Yeah, yeah. I feel like a fire service is its own business yeah. coaching group. You yeah. don't spend two thousand dollars a month on. Yeah, it. no, it <laughs> was. Uh, it's it's been great. I mean, just the amount of the knowledge you get from the guys on the truck. Yeah, you, know, you, you can look at it. some of it's bull crap, but yeah. <laughs> a lot of it's good intentions. Yeah, of course. You know. How did you transition to, to finally getting like some momentum behind it? So like um, as you launched it, where was was there ever a stage where you're like, all right, now it's now it's this is a real thing? Oh, uh, there's a couple different things. So when we kind of made it a business and we got a Facebook page, okay, that was a big one. We got a Facebook page, <laughs> and um, that was back on the day when like it wasn't just all mean nasty people on yeah. Facebook. Everybody had a Facebook, <laughs> and um, so. We got a Facebook page, started growing it, and um, I did a giveaway because I was trying to gain a little bit of traction, and uh, did a giveaway, and it went kind of viral. Um, we got like, when I say viral, keep in mind I'm still a guy like in my garage. <laughs> uh, we got like five thousand Facebook followers in like two weeks, which was huge, and I was like, oh my god, like, yeah, you know, that's a big deal. I'd take yeah. five thousand yeah. followers in two weeks. So. Yeah, so um, the orders kind of started coming in. Um, hired my first part-time guy we, we actually got a large what i'm going to call a large department or it was like 15 straps yeah um what's large now I and mean, what's like a big what's uh, a big like deal like 400 today? 500 <laughs> okay yeah, got it. yeah. Um, gotta get some perspective yeah, yeah. yeah so in perspective this was a huge order yeah um so we got it and uh had a young kid that was kind of i'm not gonna say mentoring but he was involved you know we, we kept him around you yeah know, Spend him some crackers, keep him around. <laughs> yeah. And a uh, fireman or just yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So he was uh like seventeen, eighteen years old. Uh still a senior in high school. So I was like, Hey man, come over after school and you can help me cut down this stuff for that that leather and uh I remember For this big order. Yeah, for this big order. And we had just enough leather to make this happen. Right. So I'm like, all right, here's the front piece, which is a shorter piece, and then you got the big long piece. Um and the cool thing about leather is yeah, you can sew it, but you can't sew a radius trap together. Oh, uh, you know, so once you make a cut, it's done. So I had to go like pick up my kid or something or something came back and the dude had cut all of my leather into all small pieces. Oh no. So you couldn't make a yeah, so you, like, need, you need a big one. Yeah, I had no money. <laughs> oh, no. I mean I didn't have enough money to buy enough leather for what we needed. Oh no. so all the raw materials yeah, are all just the raw materials are host. gone. We're you know and I'm like oh, no. dude, you know, I can't yell at this kid because Obviously, it was my fault. I wasn't clear on the instructions. Yeah. Um, back to learning about people management. <laughs> um, and and I'm, I'm screwed. So I'm like, what do I do? You know, I'm talking to my wife. I'm like, look, I'm going to have to – I don't know what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to send their check back or something. Oh, because yeah. they'd already, like, they'd already contracted with or, you. Like, all right, here's the bid. Yeah, they had contracted, but they hadn't paid. But we yeah. had to upfront the thing. Yeah. Um, so – Long story short, we wound up. I don't remember what it was. I think we actually used Facebook and got a couple extra orders in to take that money and buy the Just material for this order. Scrap so we could keep you know <laughs> rolling, uh, rolling the capital. Which you know, when I say capital, we're talking about a couple hundred bucks of capital, right? If you got capital. none, you yeah, know, it's a little yeah. more than you got. So um, times cool. were, times were kind of pressing there, um, and that, you know that first taught me about money movement. But uh, long story short, anyway, that order was able to give us some some uh, I guess credentials yeah uh, so then you can say hey here's someone that's yeah. actually done this here's we built 15 yeah. like it's not yeah. our first time yeah um so i gave some credentials the second one was um we were we were growing and i always when i was at the fire department i always grew with my foot on the brake in other words mm. i wanted to control that growth up and not just spike because yeah. that's you run out of people you run out of resources you run out of capital you run out of whatever it is you get you know um and then i think you just get into problems so i was kind of just ride that we weren't eating spam sandwiches so yeah <laughs> it wasn't that huge of a deal that we had to make that next step tomorrow yeah um so i had a guy that he was a church friend when i was a teenager oh yeah and um he had had bariatric surgery lost a lot of weight so he brought his belt by one day and he's like hey man i need some holes punched in this thing i'm like dude this belt's like 40 feet long and you need like a 36 <laughs> inch you know I'm like let's just make you a new belt that's awesome <laughs> so he kind of helped me he's like hey man you know i'm kind of he, he owned a restaurant and had kind of he was going to work for another restaurant that restaurant had kind of folded he's like you know money's kind of tight you got any extra work let me know uh, you know oh, kind of yeah. available in the money in the morning so if you got any extra work Coming out with me. So, long story short, hired, hired this guy part time to come so help me out. First hire. First hire, yeah. Um, part time, he's working for me. 
um, good friend to his family, oh, man. everything, you know. That's so, a lot of weight, I feel yeah, like. To... Yeah, so, um, you know, it's part-time. I'm not truly overly, I guess you would say, committed to your employee. You know, if you do gal work, it's great. If you don't, yeah. it's your part-time job. I don't feel bad. To, hey, we don't have any work today. Yeah. Um, so kind of grew a little bit. Um, I remember one day he came in. Uh, he would leave about 11 or 12 or so to go work um, his other job at this other restaurant. He was a chef. And uh, he left, and like an hour later, he came back. And I'm like, <laughs> this is weird. And he's like, yeah, they just let me go. And I'm like, okay. So, you know, he's like, he's got the stress. He just lost his restaurant. Know, he's got yeah. this new job. Got three kids, wife, you know, trying to trying to make ends meet. And he's like, I don't know what I'm going to do, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, just work here. Oh, really? Yeah, so- and I just mouth farted. Yeah. yeah, it just like it mouth diarrhea <laughs> everywhere. I'm like, just work here part time. I got you. And then I'm like, wait, I just said that. So now the challenge is on. Yeah, now you're committed. Huh? Now I've committed. And yeah. not only is this just not only were you signing up for like more than just a couple hours a week? You're saying, hey, come on yeah. in. And, yeah, oh, yeah, I'm like, this. All right, come full time. I'll match your salary. You oh know, wow, um, yeah. Or not match it, but I'll give you what. You, yeah, you give, gotta, give him a salary. Yeah, yeah give him a salary. All of a sudden, now you're responsible bills. for yeah. it. Yeah. And then you know, I made that. I'm like, oh yeah, we can do this. And I'm like, we're going to do this, you know? Yeah. What uh, did that feel like? I mean, what, you know, at the end of the day, yeah. was it like, were you concerned? Were you excited? What was that? It was a mix of emotions. Cause we were kind of backing up, you know, we had plenty of work. Yeah. Um, I knew I was going to be fine. Cause I still had an income. At the you were still department. working at the fire station. Yeah. yeah. I'm still at the fire station. I'm still teaching at night. Oh, yeah. I'll be fine. Yeah. Um, I don't you have every to, fireman's I, side gig yeah, going on. I don't over. have to pull, <laughs> you know, 90 grand a year out of this business for me to keep the lights on. Yeah. 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 Um, so, anyway, it was just a lot of pressure. I mean, did you know, he rise to the occasion and yeah. help you? And, oh, yeah, and that yeah, was, yeah. That ended up being a good thing. Um, yeah, and he had owned business. He he helped me out a lot early yeah. on with, hey, this is where I made this mistake. Hey, this is where I made this mistake. Yeah. Um, and like you said, you know, are the businesses exactly the same? No, but business is business as yeah. far as black and white on paper, uh, things like that. So um, that was just a lot of pressure. You know, not only is he an employee now and he has mouths to feed at home and lights to keep on, but he's also kind of my friend. So I can't, I can't drop this ball. Um, that's interesting. What did you do? Like, as you were then structuring or thinking through that, like how, what changed in your world when that happened? Um, we hustled, we grinded, um, (laughs) we begged, pleaded, uh, Social media became a big thing. Google Analytics became a big thing. Were those things you had done before uh, or was it not? Like, no, that yeah. was just wing it, man. We get an order this week. We get two next week. We get five this week. Whatever it is, you know, it was just about growing the business then. It was just grind. Had you ever worked that hard before or was that like a whole new level of, of uh, volume um, that you had to stick on top? Worked that hard? Or maybe I mean, that much? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I worked that much. Um, <laughs> yeah. I was working like three part time jobs at one oh, point. Oh, yeah. So you've been around that block. Yeah. So the grind wasn't a big deal. I guess the stress, I've never been around that much stress. And you say, well, dude, you rode a fire truck and, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's a different kind of stress. Yeah. You know, the fire truck stress is we show up. Hey, we, you didn't create the problem. I didn't create the truck. problem. I'm just trying to make it better. But in the business, this you problem, created that I problem. created this problem <laughs> and I have to own that. You yeah, know, this, exactly. this thing can't burn down. Yeah, exactly. Um, so it was uh, a lot of grinding. Yeah. And, it's uh, interesting you talk about, I think a lot of firemen are different than like your general public. So like if you're listening, you're not a fireman. Like I, I generally think firefighters are really hard it's workers. It's a different mindset. And like, you know, they you get a bad rap like, oh, hose draggers, cave in, whatever. But it's yeah. also like, man, if you tell a fireman like, hey, you have got to climb up that mountain 12 yeah. times by the end of the shift or else yeah. whatever, someone's going to die. They're going to yeah, do they're it. They're going to do it. They're going to try. They're going to do it. They're going to get the guys together. They're all going to do it. Yeah. And you tell like a lot of lay people or people that haven't been in public safety, I mean, they're going to whine about it. They'll stop halfway yeah. through. Yeah. So I feel like firemen are kind of just predisposed to want to be able to just do what it takes just to grind. It. Yep. Just but it's it. interesting to talk about the stress difference because I haven't yep. really heard it. Grinding is not new to most firemen. Yeah. But the different kind of stress of like, I created the problem versus someone else creating yeah. the problem is it's unique for me to hear it because I really think that sums up a lot of what our audience and our people that we interact with, yeah. like that is the difference. It's yeah. all of a sudden Our stress is just, it's there and, and yeah. it goes away and then you go sit on the couch and wait for the next one. Yeah. And yeah. you're with all your buddy, whatever, yeah. but it's just different when it's, it's different when it's you're responsible. You're responsible. You created it. It's on you. Yeah. Um, you know, looking back at it, you were talking about the stress and all that stuff. This kind of gives me a lot more respect for the fire chief. 
you know, <laughs> think about it, right? <laughs> it just, you inherited this puppy. Uh, yeah. Well, can you imagine having being a fire chief? And I've never been a fire chief, but can you imagine having a volunteer workforce? Oh, that yeah. you like you, you got to correct someone that's volunteering. If yeah. I'm paying someone, then I feel like I can correct them. Like, yeah, I got the, yeah. I got the right to, but like. If they're a volunteer, I'm like, oh my god, I cannot yeah. imagine being a fire chief. I feel it, like that's that's uh, <laughs> a unique world, man. Have you ever done yeah. any fire service leadership, chief level, or anything uh, like that? No, 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 yeah, no, 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 <laughs> no I'm, I'm a host dragger, man. Oh uh, yeah, I like to ride backwards. Yeah. That's my way. Yeah. Yeah. I like driving. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. But, um, so, how long did it take you know to stop pulling double duty as a fireman and really shift into full time? This is what I'm doing now. I'm hiring a team. I'm building this business. Yeah. So we hired. Um, <clears throat> I'd hired that other employee fast forward, you know, we went through several different shops of growing and, um, I'm what sure was your first, your first shop was a garage. Yeah. The, well, we were in the kitchen of my house and we moved <laughs> to the garage. Yep. That's a big uh, upgrade. Yeah, yeah. Big upgrade. Um, from there we went to, uh, it, my grandpa was 93 years old and, uh, we had to put my mother or my grandma in the nursing home. Oh, okay. So, uh, right down the street from where he lived. So, um, he said, well, I felt bad. I wanted him, you know, they live, they were married like 70. Oh, wow. Some years. Um, yeah. 70 plus years. And you don't get to see her every day. So on my days off, me and my mom would kind of alternate taking him to, to see my grandma. And he's like, well, why don't you just move your shop out here, you know, to my old woodworking shop. So I did that. And, uh, you know, another thing, oh, this is amazing. I've got, you know, I'm in a million square foot. You know, I'm just in a woodworking shop. <laughs> That's um, awesome. So we stayed there for six, eight months. And, uh, he came out one day, he's like, man, you're, you're just cramped. There's stuff everywhere. This looks like a, you know, you need more space. And I said, yeah, so we got to figure something out. So my great grandma's house, which had turned into like family storage when she passed away in the eighties, it had dude, <laughs> just deco Christmas like decorations from stuff. 1982, you know, like yeah. sil silver <laughs> Christmas tree, which is probably worth like a million dollars now. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> You know, I had all that stuff, so I went through, cleaned that out, gutted this house, and turned it. It was the coolest leather shop I ever had. Old creaky hardwood floors. Oh, no, is he turned a house stone. into your oh, workshop. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, cool. Creaky. What sort of tools do you need? Can you do it with hand tools, or you yep. have to have so like at that time, tools? we were all doing, uh, you know, all hand cut with hand strippers. So it can be in a house. Everything was beveled, you know, by hand. We had really had no machinery other than a sewing machine um, at that point. So that's it was, cool. uh, it was cool was your family uh, supportive i mean it's in the in a oh, family yeah, yeah. house they're yeah. like hell yeah this is good yeah yeah so uh, my mom's only child so she didn't have any brother or sister to argue with and my <laughs> grandpa cool. it gave him something to do he wasn't you know he, he did woodworking his whole life so he a lot of times he would uh you know take his afternoon siesta and then come back out there and help me <laughs> That's um, cool. doing little odds and ends so we we're doing everything by hand um but you know kind of getting back to you i hired um two or three full-time employees um we moved from that uh, I, that house, I uh, actually bought a house that had a bigger shop on it. That's awesome. And, for you to live in or for you to work in? Well, th we bought the house to live in, but I bought the house. <laughs> I convinced my wife to let me buy the house because of the shop that it was on. You see, that's all. I feel like we're all the same, right? Yeah. Like, hey, I really think this is a really good business yeah. idea. Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. The shop <laughs> looks really nice, babe. Just check off the house. Make sure it meets all your things. And, you know, yeah. we're at the check. Um, so we moved to the house, had several um, several full-time employees Several, you know, a bunch of guys working on and off shift, you know, get yeah. off shift, uh, come work for us. Um, had a really just cool culture there. So um, we moved, we outgrew that in a year. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. So you kind of had, like, you were yeah, rapid we growth, were just, hopping for yeah. a while. Um, so we outgrew that shop in a year. It was just, we were to the point we needed um, just more space. I mean, we were, we were in, the, I think that shop's like 1,400 square feet. Oh, wow. Um, so we were kind of on top of each other and, um, long story short, went and leased this space down the street mm. and, um, hired, uh, my neighbor. So I'll tell you a really funny story. <laughs> so my neighbor across the street, um, we moved in to that house, you know, and there's people in and out of here and dude, we're grinding. We're working till midnight, <laughs> two o'clock in the morning, especially at Christmas when everybody wants the Christmas gifts and stuff like that. Oh, we're just oh, grinding. Yeah. yeah. So there's cars in and out. These guys are it's always different cars, you know. <laughs> Does he think so, you're a drug user? Yeah. So my neighbor Sherman across the street, he finally comes every one day. I'm out like Saturday morning working <laughs> in the yard or something. He's like, I got a question. He's like, what? He's like, what are you doing down there? And he said it like he was my dad. Like, are you an idiot and selling drugs in my neighborhood? You know? And I'm like, we make a leather shop. He's like, I don't believe you. There's too many people in and out of here. 
<laughs> and I'm like, what do you mean you don't? Like, come on, I'll show <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah. I'll show you so I showed him. Uh, long story short, you know, he's a good friend of mine now. Um, actually, works for me full time. So he left. Oh uh, no! Way. Yeah, he left. Uh, he worked for a company called Ingersoll Rand, which they make. Oh yeah, they're all tools. Everything. Every Air compressor. Tools, is they tool, make yeah. golf carts. They make. Oh uh, no yeah, way. Like all club cars. They make all kind of stuff. So. He worked there for like 25 years. He's like, dude, I'm retiring. I'm coming to work with you. This is the coolest job. He no was, way. Yeah, he was making some extra money, at, you know, working part-time for me. That's cool. Um, so long story short, you know, we kind of just – we were just grinding. Yeah. Anybody that could work and cut a straight line, we were hiring them. <laughs> so we moved to this 1,500-square-foot um, place we leased, and I was like, man, this is it. Like, oh, You thought you made it big time there, We're big huh? time. We'll oh, never yeah. need any more space. Um so at that point, the business was so busy, and we, we were lacking um, really customer service. We weren't mm. able to meet what we were saying we were going to do. Was most of your workforce at that mm. time doers, like leather people, oh. versus like you didn't have an order entry team or like a? No, no, we didn't have like if you called, it was me or another dude that answered the phone. And I had to stop making something to go answer the phone. <laughs> yeah, or you know, you would sit down at midnight and get back to emails. eleven emails that yeah you were already too late on or things like that. So um, I said, man, you know, I'm working. We got all this stuff going on. I really just need to hire a manager. So I hired a manager, which looking back at it was a a smart but dumb decision. I didn't (laughs) want to give up the fire service. Yeah. So you were still working the fire service. This time, holy cow. So I hired this manager and I'm like paying him. I'm paying him more to manage my business than I'm making at the fire department, which (laughs) when you say it like that, you look back and you're like, this guy's an idiot. Why is he on your podcast? Um, <laughs> but it was just a love for the job. I love the guys, man. I had the best crew, you know, one of the best crews I'd ever been on. Yeah. It was just, we yeah. Why down, would you give that up? Cause was downtown on a busy company. Yeah. No way. I got hired in when it was lifetime insurance. Oh, no way. Yeah. Dang, you so, really, yeah, no yeah. way. So I'd have been hard pressed. It was just, give that um, too. so I hired this guy and, um, coolest guy ever. I did him a favor. So he's a retired Navy master chief. Oh, wow. right. so over, a public servant in some capacity. Yeah. Over yeah. helicopter search and rescue. So, again, nice. different clowns, same circus. Yeah. You know? um, but he got out of the Navy after being in there for 30 years. He didn't know civilian life. So oh. he's like, dude, I think this would be a great fit because I'm – I need structure. If I go to political correctness world, this ain't Oh, happen. yeah, that's you know? true. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, anyway, we brought him in. He wanted – you know. It was a three-year kind of plan. He was going to come in and phase out in three years. And go oh, so you on. actually planned that. Like, hey, I don't need you to be here for 100 years. Yep. I need you yep. to come in, build yep. this He thing wanted out. to own his own business, didn't know what he wanted to do, but wanted to live the small business life without the risk. Was that a um, was that a hard conversation to have, or was that like natural? Say, hey, I, I don't need you for 100 years. I don't want to give you a long-term career. Yeah, I'm no, really looking um, for a... No, when he came and interviewed... Um, I kind of fell in love with him, and that's the worst thing you can do in an interview. <laughs> but he really spoke my language. We we're yeah. from the same culture. Yeah, he would. I knew he would fit in with the guys. He yeah. could take if somebody, you know, busted his balls a little bit. Yeah, that yeah, kind yeah. of thing. Um, but also knew he had a lot of leadership, and um, I mean, the guy's been in the Navy for thirty years, flying helicopters. Yeah, he's been around the block. I'm pretty sure there's not a problem in this leather shop he can't solve. Yeah. Or a personnel problem that he hasn't seen. I mean Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, we're we're not in foreign countries with no, drunk, shooting em- at drunk you. employees at the bar and we're getting shot <laughs> yeah, at. Exactly. This is this'll be easy. So um he came in, um, you know, kind of did his thing and, and he really were he really pushed me, I guess you would say, um he handled a lot of the to getting people prepared, and we do it in the fire service all the time. You know, you're always training the guy below you for your next job. Yeah. And he had the time to do that, uh, to implement that. Um, to actually spend To actually spend the time. And, I didn't. Yeah. I had to answer the phone or make the, you know, make this or fix this or order this or. Yeah. I mean, I'm running 75. I feel that same problem every day. Like, you, you don't have the time to actually devote to it. Yeah, so. to, to basically just progressing your employees to be ready for the next stop. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so he kind of implemented that, and he also pushed me. He's like, "Dude, how do you know what you're ordering?" I'm like, "I've just you were, like your supplies, like you just call yeah, them like a, we didn't have a spreadsheet account. or nothing. I just <laughs> walked around and looked, and I'm like, we're gonna need this and this and this and this. Oh wow! And I knew what was coming through, and I knew what was going out, and yeah. it was all in my head. And he's like, "Dude, if you die tomorrow, I will have no clue how to do your job." Oh, interesting. And I'm like, "Oh yeah." Is that something that you think was? <clears throat> You know, I I don't know if it's a small business thing or it's a fireman thing. Like you yeah. just carry all that stuff in your yeah. head. But like just, how 
Was it unnatural to then begin processing what you were doing? In it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was crazy. Like it's just, I grew and and I knew and I, I could just look at something and say, "Yep, we're gonna need two more cases of that to get us through next month." Yeah. Or you know, it was just he's like, "Well, how much of this do you move?" At? Did he have to like pull that stuff out of you? Or yeah, how yeah. Did you... Like it, it was, it was, it was miserable. And he's asking me questions that I know the answer to, but I don't know. You don't answer, know why. I don't yeah. know the answer why or whatever. Yeah. So um, he sat me down. We we developed. Uh, we interviewed several different companies for um, a software that would basically do my job for me. <laughs> yeah. um, that would you know we had set down like you would if you were ordering a fire truck. You know we want these Go lights through. or we, you know um, we want these this stuff and and we sent it out to several different companies and interviewed them and wound up. Um, Going with this company, um, we we broke their mold as well because uh, they didn't realize what they were getting into. Um, they offered free integration. Interesting. They don't offer that anymore. <laughs> Was that coming in doing like an implementation? And uh, yeah, and, and also taking all of our SKUs and converting them. So like the software would say, if you ordered a radio strap with this color leather, this size, um, it would break down all the parts and pieces you okay, needed. Create bill materials yeah. and yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, there's. 278,000 combinations for one Holy color of a radius strap. That's crazy. And they all have different skis. Was it something that, like, as you got into this, was it, you know, that guy sounds like he was super instrumental in your business. Yeah. And I feel like it's hard to line people up and know you're going to work well together. What did you do to figure out that cultural fit? Or what, how do you evaluate your team to make sure you guys all speak the same language and come from a common thread? So I have learned, um, and I'm, I'm sure you've seen this, um, I hate it. I hate interviews. Interviews are like the awkward <laughs> blind date, and you don't know whether you're getting, you know, like the cute little innocent girl that you're actually kind of in the conversation with, or is she going to be like bat crap crazy? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. interviews are terrible. I hate it. I just go off like gut feel. Oh yeah. Um, and usually when you take people and walk them around, and you see how they interact with people. Yeah. I learn a lot more about them and that than I ever did in the interview and how they answered my question. Who's successful? Like, what are your best people like? Um. Dude, uh, old. Oh. <laughs> really? So, yeah, don't take this the wrong way, but like these older guys who have worked in manufacturing <laughs> that, that, that have already made their money, they're just looking for something to do. They're looking for that a change of so career. Yeah. They're tired of the PC correct. Yeah, they want to be able to say model. this. Yeah. They want to be able to show up to work, do their job, and go home and make a paycheck. And, you know, that. I've had huge success with those guys. Is the they leather industry hard. an old school industry or is it just people just need the outlet? Like I just need to be almost uh, like the fire station. Like yeah, this so is the club. There, there's no buddies. leather college or leather uh, institute I could go. It's so probably the same thing with you. There's not like a group of people if you put out, indeed, I want to target all the people graduating from this college with this degree. Yeah, no way. There's, you know, you might find an electrical engineer or something like that, but um, there's, Nobody, we have to teach at all. So yeah. at that point, I'm going to teach you whatever you want to be to be an employee. How do you cultivate the team? Not energy, but like, how do you cultivate? Because I know I have a really hard time managing people that are older than me. Yep. And I'm like, I'm 32. So most people yeah. are older than me. Yeah, yeah. Um, phew, there's um, a lot of times those guys like, I'm not from a manufacturing background. I'm from a fire department background. Yeah. <laughs> like Sherman, I was talking about my neighbor. He was a huge part of manufacturing and I actually took him on a couple different um business meetings with me where I went places like uh, one of the distributors we buy a lot of hardware from, they have a manufacturing side of their business too. Mm. So we went to take a tour. I'm like, you're coming with me. You need to because, come and watch this yeah, and teach me what I need to know. Because you used to build air compressors and they're essentially building leather. So you're going to under, you know, how can we relate? How can we get this yeah. together? Um, so, so you almost take the stance of, let me learn from these guys. Let me learn versus, from these guys. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm not asking them to run my accounting department or, uh, <laughs> or your social come out media. With, yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, but take what they've got. Yeah. Um, they've got, you know, whether it's, Hey, train this employee. And I know that you have a good work ethic and this guy's young and we're not sure yet. Yeah. If he can hang with this dude, then he's, he, he'll make it. Yeah. If he can't hang with this dude, <laughs> then this, I know this guy's going to get mad yeah. and he's going to come blow up my office and, you know, it'll be a problem, right? Throw a geriatric tamper <laughs> or a temper tantrum. But, yeah. But he's right. Yeah. You know, so. Um, That's a good point. So you, you kind of just balance it and yeah. kind of go but with it, you know, right? So most of those guys have more work experience than I do. Yeah. You know, um, so listen to them. They're yeah. Not, they're not wrong. Um, 
Now, I heard something interesting about your business, and maybe it's not true, but maybe it is. Do you guys do a lunch every day that someone comes yeah. in and makes yeah. for your so, team? Yeah, we're, we're firehouse culture <laughs> blend. <laughs> i got to hear this. Tell me about um, this. So we're, we're firehouse culture blended with um, modern uh, manufacturing, blended with uh, um, corporate America about that much. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So, so yeah, we, uh, when I built the last shop we're in, we're in a 7,500 square foot, um, warehouse and, um, we got in during COVID and I was able to kind of build it how I wanted to, because the realtors were all scared that nobody was going to buy anything. Oh, yeah. So was it COVID. a new build to suit? Yeah. Oh, yeah. cool. So I got to design it exactly how <laughs> I wanted to. Um, it goes back to the manufacturing thing. We oh, yeah. tried several different processes and. To start off, we had like everything was zigzagging around, and yeah. you know, you need so you laid it out, and it, yeah. So we yeah. we laid it out. We we kept laying it out, and making it even better. Um, so we got to here, and um, we had our a row of offices in the middle, much like what you kind of have here. And I'm like, hmm, that's free space up there. So we put in this big table, kitchen, everything upstairs. Uh, oh, upstairs! Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So um, you know, it didn't take any square footage away from production or. Hit it with a forklift or you know <laughs> anything like that. Yeah. But um, what it did was allow oh, us a good place to eat. So you know we started off doing the you know firehouse rules five dollars a meal. Oh yeah. You know, um, eating is optional. You just have to pay five dollars <laughs> to socialize. <laughs> That's uh, awesome. So we got the full kitchen there, and we kind of you know I like to keep the firehouse culture. I think um, much like what we're doing here, a lot of great conversations and ideas come from just taking that five minutes to talk. Um, or bouncing something off. Do you guys eat as a group every day? Um, most of the time, yeah. 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 So um, here lately, we've kind of slacked off on the cooking part, but um, for sure, every Friday we eat together. That's a good idea. Sure, just but, throw it in the kitty um, and then grab everyone yep. together. And... Um, it's just, it's been kind of crazy the last few months with everything. So yeah, you know, the downside is you have to send somebody to the grocery store. Yeah. And you got to have somebody that's cooking. But at the end of the day. Do you just rotate one employee in like once a... Usually I wind up cooking at all. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so if I've been tied up or, or whatever, yeah. then it just kind of doesn't happen. But, What's the yeah. conversation like when you guys are at lunch? I feel like this is such a different place to work than like, I, I yeah, picture not, yeah. a leather manufacturing plant is very, you know, like I just yeah. picture it being manufacturing, but like, yeah, it sounds no, like it's very firehouse. It's very firehousey. Um, yeah. The conversation is, is no different than any other firehouse <laughs> table, any other, um, you know, hanging out on the bumper after training in the volunteer firehouse. Yeah. Uh, any of those conversations, um, you know, some of them are great. Some of them are probably not great. Some of the viewers probably get it. Some of them probably don't. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, we, uh, you know, it's just a lot of firehouse culture. I think that's where I came from. Yeah. That's where we had a lot of success and that's where we learned. My leather distributor, a guy I buy leather from calls me up one day and, and he's, um, he's like, Hey man, I got this guy. He does exactly what you do and he's wanting to get out of it and he wants to, See if you can service customers. I'm like, okay, cool, whatever. Give him, have him give me a call. I had no idea who this guy was. Yeah. Um, so he calls me, long story short. He's like, look, dude, I owned a belt factory. You know, we kind of fell in this by accident because we were um, up around D.C. Oh, yeah. And um, one of the big counties who's the leader in the fire service came to him and asked him, one of the guys on the truck came to him and asked him to make something, and he made a radio trap. And next thing you know, he's working with NIST and UL to get it um, – approved and, and go through the study to basically, um, I don't know how much you know about radio straps, but there's a huge not study a out lot. there. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the advantage to radio strap, it's not just wearing a radio in a cute fashion. <laughs> yeah, a little um, purse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> it's, it's been thinking. proven by UL and NIST, um, that it is the safest way to carry a radio strap in the event of a mayday because of the locations of where everything are in your body. You get the least, uh, signal loss, um, you have the best access to any microphone, no matter what position you fall in or get trapped in or whatever. Yeah. So there's a lot of data out there that says this is the best and safest way to wear like a radio. Affordable yeah. yeah. So he, he went through this accreditation process with him and took him 15 different makes to. Oh, he had to like actually come up with something that was like, this is the safe model. Use yep. this one. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So whether it was changing where a rivet is, changing. Did radio straps was, exist before that, or was yeah, it like yeah, a new yeah, thing? Yeah. Okay. Um, but it was just validating but it was and proving. Just validating it. Like, this and makes proving. it. Yeah, yep. So, um, you know, he was a big instrumental thing in that. And he's like, hey, I, you know, I got these customers really good. I've been servicing them for 15 years, but yeah. I'm trying to get out. You know, we're, I'm 
getting older. I want to retire. I've got a beach house now. And <laughs> yeah. I like to fish. So cool. No big deal. Um, so we had worked out, um, the contract was up for bid and we were trying to work through that with him being the middleman and I was over here and he was in and the middle. And you were just going to contract make him and yeah, ship him. Yeah. yeah. So that was what I wanted to do. Like if you're going to be the middleman, that's fine. You're going to hold all the accountability. I'm going to make your order. I'm going to make it to your specs. We're going to ship it out and you write the check. He writes the check to me. Same. Done deal. They don't even know I'm even in the picture. Yeah. You're just a contract yeah. manufacturer at um, that point. So he had, um, tried this once with a, another guy who was, uh, used to be big in the leather service, but kind of died out. Um, he tried it before didn't work. He was mm. doing it out of his house. So, um, long story short, he's like, Hey, you know, we got to get this thing going. Let's go get all the equipment. So I take two of my trucks, two of my trailers. He brings the truck and trailer. Were you going to take his equipment and yeah. bring it so out of your he had, shop? Yeah, so he had left it at this guy's house for him to make it while he moved <laughs> oh, to the beach. Yeah. No. So we show up at this, and I'm kind of like, I'm like the leather repo guy yeah, you're taking like, hey, man, stuff here from to grab this my gear. competitor. Uh, did you I've know the guy? Met. I never, I didn't know him. I mean. <laughs> no. Knew of him, but yeah. Not. <laughs> he was a big, um, you know, he was one of the bigger names and when I got into it and I was yeah. screwing up stuff at the fire station. Yeah. So it was oh, kind of, you know, it was like going to Rob repost something from your grandpa i guess you could say you know like he, he had been awful. around for a while yeah so um we got there long story short i mean it was a, a crap show uh, of a move it was just a lot of big is it like equipment. big equip, equipment yeah, stuff? yeah 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 so you know he tried to cram up basically a, a leather factory and all this equipment and move it into his basement and this building outside of his house yeah so we had to get like like this one machine weighs like nine thousand pounds. Oh, so you gotta have riggers and everything. Yeah. So we had around. yeah we got you know uh, this big giant lull in its background pulling out yeah <laughs> it, it's it was a disaster. So anyway we got the stuff. Long story short we weren't able to kind of make a deal. It just it didn't work out for oh, really? either one of us physically. Did but, you get the machines out? Yeah. So we got the machines brought in there because he had to get them out. And um, but we're still friends he sends me radio strap business i send him shield stuff if they do something that if they want something that we don't offer yeah, yeah. um but the, that machinery was huge for us because he he owned a belt factory and essentially oh, we're so making he was like belts so processes he's, he's screwed up everything you know for the last 40 years and i get to come in and take advantage of everything he screwed up and i get the perfect oh, thing so we brought cool. his machinery in and kind of retooled it for to make your our, stuff. To, to make all of our stuff. Um, it, How did that change your business? Oh, dude, it, it, speed was crazy. Um, so we took, um, like back when we were in the house and I had that first employee, it would take us two days for two sides of leather, which is essentially <laughs> one cow, yeah. to strip it down into belts, mark all the templates, edge it. And you just do it by hand. I yeah, yeah, we would do it by hand. So it would take us two days to do two of those. So a day... Two day people, yeah. Two, two people day per side. Yeah. So we can do like 40, 60 sides a day right now with really? one guy. <laughs> really? Yeah. Holy so, cow. Um, what is it? Just a big, is it a mach- like an automated machine or what? No, it no. Do? It's, uh, I mean, it's still a lot of hand up, but it just, it does multiples and it punches all the holes. Like we set the dies up and it punches all the holes. So every measurement's always correct. Every hole is uh, always awesome. centered. Is your scrap count way less now because yep. you're able to? Yep. So we're a lot more efficient with everything. Um, and secondly, it's a lot less labor cost. Um, People always What's talk that? about like, oh, machines are going to put put the common worker out of business. But it sounds yeah. like that machine allowed you to increase your business and then hire more people. Cause exactly. From what yeah. I understand, I mean, your business yeah. is growing like a weed. Yeah. So, I mean, we still are handmade, but as, as far as getting from a piece of skin to the, to the, raw the, parts to the two by fours of the radio strap, I guess you would yeah. say, um, you know, it, it, from that point on, we're still hand making them, but it allowed everything to speed up. So we just put more people on the backside. So everything's a lot more efficient. We're the only company that can do a four week guaranteed turnaround time on anything custom. Oh, interesting. is uh, that kind of the big differentiator for you guys? Yep, like you can do it yep. quick. Yeah, we can do it quick and do it right. Um, that's <laughs> the big thing. There's things. a lot of quick guys and there's a lot of right guys. Yeah. There's not a lot of guys that are quick and right. If you had to give advice to our listeners or to a firefighter in the fire service, that's thinking about a business or has just started their business, what would you share with them as they're evaluating my public safety career, my transition into the business world, if that's my ultimate goal, what's the advice to give a firefighter that's got a side, side gig? Um, well, if you're just starting, listen, dude, take those guys that, that are around the fire service and embrace it, pull that energy, ask the questions. Um, you know, I got to the point where a bunch of guys would come and ask me a thousand questions. Um, I was honest with some of those, you know, um, I'll give you a, a funny example. We had a guy who, 
went to Harbor Freight and bought like an eighty-five dollar attachment for his <laughs> chainsaw, and he thought he was going to operate a you know a, a tree uh, business uh, or something. No, a um, uh, a mill. Oh, like he's a gonna, wood mill. Yeah, he's going to mill stuff out, and I'm like, doable. Okay, I like where you're going, but do you honestly think that if it costs seventy five dollars from Harbor Freight to get this tool, that you're going to that's going to be all you're going to need, and you're going to make millions of dollars? You know, there's a, you're always going to have to. That's a good starting point. It's no yeah. different than that crappy shield, but you can't make that your whole business plan. You yeah, know? you got to so, extrapolate um, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, so I will get all kinds of questions like that, but just embrace those guys that have been successful. Embrace those guys who have failed. Mm. Ask them where they went wrong. That's a really good point. Um, you know, Are most guys in the fire service humble enough to tell you? Uh, you got to push it. Depends. It. Yeah. it depends on what kind of relationship you have. <laughs> so focus you on know, the You know, if they're out for your best interest, um, you yeah. know, you maybe ride the same truck, have a good bond, they'll probably – I'll tell you where I failed. I'll tell you, you know. Yeah. Um, some of those guys are a little more prideful or embarrassed or um, whatever, you know, maybe maybe they won't. But um, Maybe it's an encouragement you to can those learn, that have to learn share with others. everything. Yeah. Um, the fire service has a lot of great culture. you got to embrace that and, yeah. and carry that forward. Um, it, it's worked for hundreds of years in the fire service. Um, and the, the, the business has the best customer service of them all. I mean, we show up when nobody else wants to show up and – Try to fix it. Yeah, that's um, a good point. So remember that. <clears throat> so, you know, embrace those people. Um, when to take that step, um, that's all your call. You know, um, I took this. What made me take the step to quit the fire service and go into this full time was um, really I, I had a, a financial guy who I had a different IRA with, and we would meet, and his, um, brother-in-law was a uh, battalion chief and he had just retired and he kept telling me he's like what kind of numbers you pulling in we were talking numbers and stuff and he was saying um you know why, why are you still there why are you still there i'm like man it's just it's what i do it's what I, it's all i know it's yeah um it's a big risk to jump out on your own two feet you've got the economy to think about and all that stuff you're still getting paid as long as you show up to ride a fire truck you're still getting paid yeah okay it doesn't matter what the Slow economy. Slow shift, busy yeah. shift. You're still yeah. Exactly. It doesn't matter what the economy is doing. <laughs> that's a good crutch. Yeah. Um, so my daughter was born. I went on FMLA. I was never the guy that took like forty seven hundred weeks off when he had a baby. I didn't have the baby. I'm here to help out my wife. But yeah, yeah. Know, um, at some point, I got. I need to go to work to get some sleep. Uh, <laughs> you know, um, so I took like two weeks off. Long story short, every she, cop hates um, that about a fire. Yeah, she had some complications. <laughs> had to have surgery when she was seven days old. So I've oh got wow, a, your yeah, daughter. Yeah. So oh um, wow. I've got nothing major. Mm. Um, you know, she had some intestinal issues, and they mm. kind of had to, I guess, replumb her. I guess <laughs> this is the right word, right? Fair. Yeah. So um, I've got a baby in the NICU. I'm working, at, you know, I'm off from the fire department, and I'm still getting more done at the it's a shop than I am when I'm riding a fire. Yeah, truck. You feel busier never. Yeah. Meanwhile, it's more effective. Yeah, it's more effective. Um, I've, I've had a good night's sleep. At the hospital, which is better than a good night's sleep at the fire department, right? That's fair, yeah. Um, so, you know, I've had a good night's sleep. I'm focused. And things are getting done. Things are getting aligned. It was just that brief moment was like, this is the time. I had made some other investments that kind of capitalized back in and gave me a little bit of cushion. And um, so it was just, it was that time. Um, so I, I called up my financial guy. And I'm like, look, um, he said, what is truly holding you there? And mm. I said, Dude, I got in with lifetime insurance. That's huge. He said, and what do they have to offer you when you retire? I was like, well, whatever they offer employees. And he's like, all right, so the trend's here, and you're worried about out here. <laughs> yeah. You know, so um, that was kind of what, what made me help make that, that I'm doing the right decision. So all those things kind of came together. Um, again, I'm not telling anybody to quit the fire service. Um, <laughs> do you but, still but volunteer anywhere? Are you still tied to it at all? No, I'm just so busy with, with other stuff. Um, I found a new cool thing I'm interested in, um, and – Maybe it's can you share? Regret. Yeah, yeah. So, um, my oldest son growing up, I, I missed a lot of his life. He's 13 now, so I missed a lot of his life being gone every third day. I didn't make every football game, I didn't make every anything. You know, you know if I was off, I, got, I would be there, of course, but if yeah. I wasn't, so um, I started coaching football with my youngest son, and uh, that's kind of evolved into um, a lot of football coaching. So, um, <laughs> while a lot of people are like, how are you relating that to the volunteer fire service? It's it's cool because it's the same culture. Giving back it's to that, the kids, building them up. The kids, the 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 role model experience. Yeah. 
Yeah, tell me about like, you know, in the fire service, everyone's got a mentor, right? And yeah. whether it's like a captain on a truck or it's like the fire chief or someone, it's even just an, someone's been in the service longer. Has there been anybody that really like, I don't know, that was just influential yeah. in your um, thing? Man, there's, you know, there's several of those guys going back to even the landscape thing that we talked about, you know, with um, those guys, you know, he was instrumental in that. Always a good guy to bounce ideas off. Uh, there was my last captain when we were on kind of uh, one of the funnest crews I've been on. Um, he, this guy had done everything. He was a business entrepreneur. Uh, he had been in real estate. Uh, he had been in like managing um, housing management for like apartment complexes. Oh, um, cool. He owned a safety company. You know, anything he could make money off of, dude, he would <laughs> make it, build it, sell it, flop it. And a natural, huh? And just a, a natural at it. So um, he was uh, the guy that bought the crew uh, shields, you know, the first time. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Jerry was <clears throat> really, really good to me, man. We had tons of conversations around the table of whether it was um, – Again, I didn't know anything about manufacturing, but he taught safety to a lot of these big industries. So he'd been in manufacturing. He got he picked their brain over different stuff. So he understood a lot of that stuff and, and really helped us move forward with eliminating waste. Um, you know, just any manufacturing good sound practices. Yeah, good sound practices. Um, he challenged me a lot of times to hey, the, you know, he was like he didn't have social media. <laughs> but he would get on his wife's or somebody else's and just like creep all these other companies oh, and yeah. be like, Hey, this company's doing this. Can you do this? And I'm like, yeah, but what, if, you know, he's like, well, what if you did this and change this? And um, almost like a challenging, but good yeah, yeah. someone to banter with. Yep. Yeah. So, um, we just had tons again, firehouse kitchen table, man. Oh yeah. And that's a where a lot of, of that stuff happens. Yeah. Huh? Do you guys ever discuss as a group? Like, would you guys ever be sitting there chewing the fat and then like something comes up and shields or straps and you guys end up as a whole crew just bouncing ideas off each other. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> we're, we're kind of working on one right now and, and we haven't had success yet, but it's just, usually I'll start off and I'll piddle with something. And I'll be like, I had this idea of how to do this differently or whatever, but I don't know how to get from here to here. Um, so I'll start off on a road and it'll go wrong. And then another guy will be like, well, why don't you do this? And well, then we'll get here. And yeah, you know, so um, a lot of just good guys. And, and um, again, back to that experience, um, everybody has a different background, especially in the fire service because they all did something or they have some kind of side hustle that they may know that, Hey, this product will make this, or, um, I've used this before for this and it was something similar, but really had nothing to do with leather, but it was a similar process or, or things like that that just really have, have helped us out there. I mean, you know, when I hear your business story, I hear so many things that are like born and bred in the fire service. And then those make real applicable sense in the business world, but it doesn't feel like, when I think of starting a business, like go to school, business plan, license, all the noise, yeah. it's just bullshit yeah. that takes forever. And like firefighters are like, okay, I, I'm presented, there is no 911. I am 911, so yeah. I got to do this. Yeah. So I kind of hear this theme and like, yeah. okay, I, I got to, I don't know business, I'm going to do business. But it sounds like your business is so different than the corporate world. How do you, it what, is, what there's, is like? there's, um, I always say, if I were, if, if you were a business, you know, professor at a college and call me in, <laughs> I would probably get to talk for about like four minutes before you kick me out of my out of the uh, <laughs> out of the class, and, and that's not um, wrong. But I bring a lot of the fire service culture to that, and some of it I differentiate from the fire service culture. Yeah. Um, one of the ways I differentiate is I'm not a huge like write you up guy. Oh yeah. You know, what I mean, I've worked for those captains that you know, all right, you're a minute late. Here's your write up. Oh, or, former write ups. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> um, that kind of stuff. I, I, I kind of believe that. We're all employees. We're all adults, and and for the most part, you don't do things on purpose to intentionally harm me. We can have a talk about you being irresponsible and forgot to set your alarm clock, or you went out chasing girls till midnight last night and you didn't <laughs> wake up on time. Yeah, we can have that conversation. I think I can get my point across. Now, if I start documenting things, look, you're you're yeah, kinda, you know what's coming. You know what's coming. Yeah. Um, but a lot of those conversations, I feel like we can have as a person, and I'll get a lot more respect out of you as an employee. Yeah, and me as a supervisor or business owner, then if I say, "Okay, you were late, you messed this up, here's your write up, get back to work," yeah, yeah, um, it just I, I, that doesn't real. do any. I don't, I don't feel like that does anything for you. It just makes you mad. Yeah, it makes you disgruntled. You get talked down to. We can have a conversation. Um, well, it's like talking but, to a patient on an ambulance. You talk yeah. to a patient like they're a person. They treat you a whole lot different than if you just yeah. give them all the stats yep. back to back. You know, just kind of what makes you unique in the in the business world. Like, why would a corporate professor 
how do you prove that corporate guy wrong, the corporate professor wrong? Uh, with success. I mean, it's working. Um, <laughs> you know, do uh, we have a good time? Like, uh, I've always, my employees and I, we're not there to win the marathon to be the fastest manufacturing. Um, I want these guys, if I were to die tomorrow, I want them to all come to my funeral and say, you know what? He's a good guy and he actually cared about me. Yeah. Um, not, man, that guy made millions of dollars, has a really nice beach house, and I got to see it for three hours. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's not what this is about. I'm not trying to become a multi billionaire. I want to live a good, comfortable life. Sure. My kids to be successful and have a good business where people made money. They're able to support their family, balance that work life yeah. environment. Um, you know, with, with people, sometimes it's, like I said earlier, I don't think people are naturally want to do something. You know, if, if you have an employee that comes in and busts all your windows, that's just a mad person. We, we're, we're done. We can't fix that. Yeah. But if, if you're showing up late, what, what's the root cause of the problem? Yeah. Is it, you know, okay, you're, you know, you're not telling me you need a raise or you're scared to ask for a raise. So you went and got an extra, you're working a double shift or yeah. Uh, what, what's the root cause of the problem? So sometimes that conversation, I, I, I learned that in the fire service from, from a lot of good leaders is okay. Let's investigate before we start accusing and saying, all right, you're messing up. Why are you messing up? You can't mess up. Here's your paper. Yeah. Um, you know, what, what's going on? Like, I'm not saying it's an excuse, but there's a lot of times where we can fix that. Um, yeah. Maybe that guy, you know, maybe maybe I have done him wrong, and maybe he deserves that another yeah, dollar. Yeah, I tell you. Yeah, um, interesting. You know, things like that. So it's just looking at things. I've learned to look at things, especially in people management. You got to look at them from all the different sides of the table before you start throwing darts, because yeah, it might come back and shoot <laughs> you in the face. That's awesome. Well, man, I really appreciate you being here on yeah. the show today. It's super exciting to get to talk to our audience about other first responder owned businesses that have started and grown in the bays of the fire station and that are really impacting people for good. Yeah. And appreciate you being on the show. And appreciate uh, you having me. Yeah, we'll you guys catch you next got time. cool stuff going on. So. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you. Hey guys, thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something. If you want to be on the show or you know someone who should, head over to the2448.com and submit your business. Don't forget to follow and subscribe and give us a five-star rating. If you thought it was four stars, still give us five stars or I will find you. See you next time. Later.